Well, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, good day, wherever you are in the world today. I know we have a international demographic and I'm Herb, I'm, did I say I'm an alcoholic? Welcome to our 12-step uh, workshop. The call is being recorded and I'm gonna invite you to join me in the set aside prayer a prayer that invites intervention to have an open mind and an open heart. God, please set aside everything that I think I know about myself, my unmanageability, the 12 steps in you, for an open mind and a new experience with myself, my unmanageability, the 12 steps, and especially you. Please uh, join me in the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Encourage to change the things I can. And the wisdom to know the difference. So, as I mentioned to you several times, but it's worth mentioning tonight because it's a little different uh, rhythm tonight and perhaps even next week. Um, we're spending a lot of time on resentment inventory, which we normally do, but I normally spend the majority of time on the column three until I feel that the group more or less is pretty solid. And then we go forward with the column four. I have introduced the prayer for the removal of deep resentments early in the column three, because I feel that that's a tool that you need to be aware of as soon as possible, quite frankly. But this year, I'm trying something different with this group. And it came to me as we were going through column three, you were, quite frankly, picking it up pretty quickly from my experience. And so I thought maybe it might be helpful to see the full picture to get into column four more quickly than I would normally do. And so that's what we did last week. We did a teaching on column four and some examples of going through it and a conversation about it. And um, so this week, I would like to focus on column four at the, at least the beginning of the workshop. You're welcome to raise your hands and talk about any aspect of column three, column four. Hi, Herb. Hi. Um, I had talked to you about my sister that um, when I told her I was learning more about God and stuff, she was basically saying, oh, I always pray and I wanted to be a nun. And I was pretty triggered when I spoke. Yeah. Uh, and you asked me to do a step three on her. Uh, call I three, right. Mm -hmm. three, yeah, and the step four. So um, uh, should I read my step three? Uh, column three, yeah. Mm -hmm. Column three, I mean. Sorry. Um, when I resent Vani, always having to be right, never being able to apologize, exaggerations, making everything about her. Um, it hurt or threatened me, uh, my sense of being seen or heard, reduced by someone, um, reduced to being someone she thinks she can dominate. Yeah, and so what's your self-esteem? Um, I'm an artist, mother, accomplished, deep, wants things to be fair, shy but not shy. And your fear? Uh, that I'm not good enough, introverted in some ways. I don't love small talk. And um, did you have a column four that you also wanted to look at? Yeah, um, I had a column four. I'm not sure I did it exactly right. Um, but let's wait for just a minute. Let's, go, okay. let's take a look. Did you want to do the entire column three or do you want to look at the pride and then go over to column four? Whatever you think. 
All right, let's try doing the pride and then going over to column four. Okay, um, how I want other people to see me being treated. Others should see Bonnie um, and see me as an irreplaceable shining royal treasure, valuable and unique, a beautiful light that should be cherished and people would fe feel blessed to have in their life. Yeah, and what's your fear? Uh, that I didn't live up to my potential because of bad choices in people. Okay. Um, crossover then to the fourth column and what's your perceived role at the top? Um, I believe I'm not heard or listened to. Um, sure. All right. Um, uh, yeah, I'm um, a dismissed sister. Yeah, dismissed. Or, yeah, yeah, or relegated, or, yeah, some, yeah. Use your words again, see what happens. Um, say the words that you, you just read to me, please. Not heard or listened to. Yeah, let's stay with those. Those are your words. Not heard, sister. Okay, not heard or listened to. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right. And when you feel that feeling today, how do you behave? The answer to number one, self-seeking. What did you write? No, no. Uh, did you write it? Self-seeking, yes. I want to be acknowledged or heard is what I wrote. Um, okay, but so how is that an unhealthy self-seeking? Because I'm asking for it for somebody from somebody who likes to talk about herself. I'm asking somebody who doesn't want to do that. Okay, I am... Uh, I am in the, I behave as if uh, she is going to change. Okay. So I'm in denial of reality. Yeah. I am not in, I'm, my behavior is not in acceptance of the reality. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Excellent. Number two, selfish. How are you thinking about yourself when well, I, you have this resentment? I wrote, that's who she is, and I have to accept her for who she is. Well, but you're not. No. So it's not an answer to the question. Um, the question is, how are you thinking about yourself when, in fact, you're uh, feeling this feeling? See, I had a hard time with that because mm -hmm. I don't feel like I'm being selfish. Um, you're not being selfish in that you want her to change. You, you don't want to just ignore your sister. I love her. Well, yeah, sure. Great. So what? Yeah. But yeah. So I'm, I have to accept who she is. You don't have to, but you're going to have a resentment if you don't. Yeah. If I want to talk to her, I have to acknowledge who she is and be okay with that and know that she's not going to change. Yeah, all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So your the root of your resentment is, again, you're not accepting reality. Right. She, she's not the one that needs to change. Hello? <laughs> well, I'm getting that now, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, uh, it's refreshing because I've had so much... Like they did this and she did that. And why don't they get this that they're hurting people? And, you yeah. know, I really have been a people pleaser. And, okay. and I want everybody to feel comfortable and at my own expense. And I even had an experience of that today. Um, I was swimming with some people and they stopped to talk and I knew they wanted me to stop, but I didn't want to. So I didn't. Normally, I would have, because that was the expectation. So I'm, I am getting it. I haven't talked to my sister for a week since last week when that happened, and that's very highly unusual. Yeah. As um, I usually break down and call her, she does, but we, we've come to a point where I think she can see me changing, and um, it's good. I'm not missing it. You know, I feel good about it. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. excellent, excellent consciousness, right? Yeah, yeah. So when you feel this feeling, answer to number three, how are you being dishonest in generating this feeling? 
um, I sit on the phone and I listen when I don't want to. Yes, that's completely dishonest. That's yeah. right. Yep. And you'll figure out what to do with that. Mm -hmm. You could confront her or you could just say, I got to go. Yeah, that's what I've been doing or trying to do. Do you want me to go back to uh, three? Column three? No, not yet. Okay. No, we're not done with column four. Okay. We're, we're going to process column four because that's really the key here. Yeah, okay. And so number four, uh, uh, any uh, uh, fear connected to when you uh, have- Fear of not having her in my life at all. Yeah, and maybe the fear of confronting her. Oh, I do. Mm. Never does well. No, no, it won't. She uh, sounds like she's a unconscious narcissist from my point of view. <laughs> she is, and an ex uh, uh, um, what do you call it, extrovert. There's nothing wrong with being an extra, yeah. but she's obnoxious. Yeah, she is. <laughs> exactly. So number five, uh, where are you 100% responsible for generating this resentment? Because I want her to change and she doesn't have to. And I'm in full denial of reality and I keep going back to the well and there's no water. I've done that all my life. Yes, you have. Well, and you, you identified it earlier when you said, I really have this codependency, which permeates my life. Yes. But knowing it now. Yes. You have now a, a, dis, a, a capability of making a decision to swim when you want to and not when they don't want you to. <laughs> yeah. It was really a small breakthrough, but a big big breakthrough. You know, it was like, I don't care. Yeah. It, I, wish, yeah. I wish I had felt that way my whole life and uh, yeah no, no, come on. Well, that that i wouldn't have put up with the men i've put up with in my life <laughs> the, the alcoholics that i had made some very bad choices and had a, a son with somebody who was mean yeah. thinking i could change him and disaster i mean it's really bit played a big part in my life of thinking he's wrong i'm right he has to change yeah yep yep and uh it's unfortunate. And you know what? That's a great word. It's yeah. unfortunate. It can't, you, you can't change it in your history, but you can begin to change it now. Uh, Dr. Berger, in one of our workshops, we're very spontaneous um, in terms of our presentation because we're very, we have lots of knowledge and we're both very articulate. And uh, during halfway through the workshop, I don't think I've said this before, but uh, he, uh, he looked out at a group of a couple hundred people and he said to them, there's only one reason to do anything. Then he paused and he looked over at me at, in the front of the room. We both have microphones. And he, and he said, I've never heard him say it before. And he said, Herb, so what's the one reason? I go, wow, I, I don't know what the one reason to do anything. He said, because you really want to. Yeah. <laughs> that was, I'd never heard it before. It's so simple. It's so confrontive. Yeah. Now, it might be that you don't really want to do it, but you want the relationship more than you want your own way. So you're going to modify for right now, given the circumstances, and you're going to make a choice. I really want to have this relationship more than I want to continue swimming, <laughs> that kind of thing. But it's not because I want to please them. It's because of other reasons that are motives. Do you hear the difference? Yes. Isn't yeah. that just, a, I mean, there's only one reason that you want to do anything because you really want to, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's a principle that will guide a complete change in your response to people. Not, not to be rude, not to be, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, how would you say, mean or, 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 or a contrarian, but just to make sure that it's coming from your insides and not from their outsides. Yeah. 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 All right. So let's go on. Um, six and seven are about harm, and we're not going to spend any time on it, but 
it's a parking spot to ask yourself, did you create any harm toward your sister, number six, and did you create any harm toward anybody else around that uh, I did. Your, your relationship with your sister. And so did you put an answer in there? Well, I put for six, I put under emotional feelings. I felt, I put threatened that, that um, I made her feel threatened because okay. nobody does that. She, or else they just go away. Yep. Yep. Me, no, but, and, and, and you put a word or so down a phrase and it's, so you've noted it now. It's not time to spend any time on it because it's setting you up for the eighth step. Okay. All right. So it's just a parking spot. And, and when you come to take a look at those six variables, it's like, is there any one of them that's relevant? Not all of them. It's not, a, it's not like answer each one. It's like, these are prompters like to remind you, is there any emotional harm? Is there any financial harm? That kind of thing. Um, so there may be none. Or there may be one or two, okay. that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm spending more time with you so that everybody kind of gets the feel of the worksheet. Um, all right. And did you put anything for number seven? Um, what harm did I cause to other people in and around this relationship? Uh, I would talk to her kids about her. Uh, yeah. All right. Good. Excellent. Wonderful note. You'll look at that later. Yeah. Number eight, any additional fears? Um. No, All I right. didn't put anything there. For nine character defects? Um, I'm stubborn and I have wishful thinking. All right, and uh, naive and denial. Yeah. And I want my own way. Yeah. Okay, all right. Um, and number 10, what did you put there for benefit or value of holding this resentment? Um, I want her to stop using me <clears throat> as a sounding board and to feel good about herself. Yeah, I know, but that's a that's from column three, ambition. That's what you want. But what's the oh. what's the benefit to you of holding this resentment? None. No, there must be a benefit. Uh, because you have to be you to have be this anger. Uh, to just to, to for her to stop talking sometimes, or when I try and say something, not to talk over me. Well, but does she know you're angry? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, so you use your anger as a defense mechanism. Well, I tell her um, when I try and say something, to and I say, could you let me talk now? Yeah, and how does that work? Well, she'll stop for a minute, but really it's not that interesting to her. She <laughs> wants to, it's like her no. telling me. Has it ever worked? No. No. No, but you keep doing it. <laughs> yes. Right, right. All right. So what was your perceived role at the top? Okay. Um, uh, is that under? Um, so at the top of the fourth column, perceived role, I think you said not heard or not listened to, sister. Not heard or not listened to, yeah. And what's the realization at the bottom of the fourth column? my real role yeah uh, that i'm needy oh excellent all right that's that's a yep that you're needy now i'm going to frame it in a different way because i like to see us turn the perceived role inside out i like to see we turn the perceived role from north to south so that we flip it mm -hmm. all right you're pointing the finger at her right all right. I am not heard. I am not listened to sister. And the truth is you're not heard by yourself and you're not listening to yourself in terms of your own needs. Now you said you're needy. All right. That, and that's a different aspect of it, but can, does it help when I use the term, you don't hear yourself. Very much. You don't respect yourself. You don't listen to yourself yes. and your own needs. Yes. Yes, I, I hear I hear them, but I push them aside. Yeah, yeah, because, oh, well, that's cute. Uh, all right, what's what? read your fears from third column. Just your the whole list of fears. Read all seven of them. For my third column? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, that I'm not good enough, introverted in some ways. Um, I don't love small talk. 
that I didn't live up to my potential because of bad choices in people. As much as I love my sister, she is who she is, and the person I knew is gone. I won't have a close relationship with my sister anymore. Um, even though I'm grateful to her, I can't put up with her alcoholic self. That I've had very bad radar for good men, gullible and naive. Um, women that aren't genuine. Um, and the bottom one is that I could lose my security or health. Okay. All right. So reading that sort of a kaleidoscope of things, what's your experience with that then in light of, especially the fourth column that we just talked about? Um, what did you write in self-esteem? Self-esteem. I wrote that I am a, an artist, mother, accomplished, deep, wants things to be fair. And, and yet you don't have a very high regard for yourself, do you? Yeah. I mean, I feel like I do, but in a way, I feel like I don't go into the world like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Although people give that to me in the beginning, I... I feel like, you know, my father was a, um, like a, I don't want to call him a narcissist, but he probably was. And my mother was an alcoholic and there was the big grandiose show, you know? And I remember when I was a teenager starting to feel insecure and that wasn't a thing that I've ever, ever felt or seen in my parents that, and so I started to realize I wasn't good enough. Yeah. That I was insecure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's maybe the needy part, and that's where you settle for lesser yeah. relationships. Because yes. it's what you're worth. Right. Yeah. All right. Great. All right. Hi. Okay. So remember we did part of the third column on my ex-husband. So can we do the fourth column, please? Yes, just remind us what the third column is by reading your resentment and your self-esteem and then cross over. Okay, so I resent Rich for not being financially responsible with me. Yeah. And my self-esteem is I'm intelligent, beautiful, worthy of being loved, cherished, cared for, respected, and appreciated. Nice, all right. And your fear? Um. Where's the, oh, okay. My fear is he doesn't, all, <laughs> all of that stuff. He doesn't respect, love, appreciate me. He's using, this is a big one. He's using me, taking advantage of me. Yeah. And wait, one last one. He's trying to hurt and punish me. And then last but not least, he, he, he will leave me financially in a bad situation. Yeah, 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 he will. Yes, he will hurt you. All right. He will hurt me. Go over to the fourth column and what's your perceived role? Okay, so my perceived role is um, that I'm being lied to and taken advantage of. Yes, yes. And when you feel that feeling of being lied to and taken advantage of, how do you behave? The answer to number one. The self-seeking? Yes. Okay. So um, your behavior, keep it really simple and straightforward. How do you behave yesterday when you're angry? How did you behave? Well, oh my God, that's such a complicated question. How do I behave? Um, what makes me furious rage? Um, and then of course, then it makes me depressed and scared and afraid. But, 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 that, but, but you're using to answer the self-seeking question? When you have this feeling of anger, how do you behave? You said, I rage, I get depressed. Those are, those are outcomes. Those are behaviors. So, and then, well, so you, 
so what I do is then I try to figure out how I can control the situation. And I spend a lot of time obsessing on that. Is that behaving? It's really hard to control the situation. All right. That's a behavior. Okay. Yeah. You know what? And that's good because I make myself fucking crazy in the middle of the night. And if I do this and do that, and I mean, I, I can't control it, but that is what I do. Wait, 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 wait. Let's talk a little bit about, so what happens at night when you are in this anger? Well, I mean, it, it'll, it'll wake me up, you know, as I start to doze off and then I get the fear of it's not going to turn out the way I want it to. And then I try to, I replay in the way if I do this and I say that and the, you know. there, now you're answering the question. I wake up, I replay, I try to control. Yes. I Those can't focus. Behaviors. Say that last thing. Those are all behaviors. Those are all behaviors. Okay. Right. So now let's look at something more subtle, actually. When you feel this feeling of anger, how are you in some unhealthy way generating this anger from your self-centeredness? What did you write for number two? That's the, the selfish. Okay. I wrote that I'm making my son deal with his dad knowing that he's going to be the brunt of Rich's anger at me. What is that answering? Well, that's part of how I'm trying to control the financial. Um, oh, you were yeah. answering the question about dishonesty. Uh, number two is about your self-centered thinking that generates this resentment. Oh, I so want, it's not want, regardless. I any of the circumstances. Is that an answer? Yeah. I want what I want. Yeah. All right. Let's go to number three. Where are you dishonest? Because I'm trying to manipulate the situation. I manipulate. I'm dishonest because I am manipulating. But And, and, and the details are, are, are your details. But you okay. know manipulating yes that that's right i am manipulating right now yeah well and yeah you you said you're trying to control that's a dishonest function all right mm. yeah all right uh number four where, where are you fearful okay so what i wrote is that rich will not give william enough money to live on that he's causing William emotional damage and that he's going to stick me with financial obligations. That's great. Very clear. Oh, okay. Good. Very clear. Now, number five, how did you approach? I'm not even going to try to prime the pump. I want you, I want to see how you approach that question. Number five. Where am I at wrong yeah. at fault? Blame for me. Where does this? Okay, how about this? Okay. Cause this was the insight I kind of got at the end. And I added in after listening to all of last night. I, I I want him to take care of me. I want him to care about me and to take care of me. Okay, so I'm responsible for my resentment because my expectation of not being taken care of is not being met. Yeah, see, the I want him to take care of me. That's ambition from the third column or the fourth question concerning security. But over here, it's I'm responsible because I'm not willing to be realistic and know that I'm going to have to step up to the plate and take care of myself 100%. That's good. That's good. <laughs> well, that's where we've come to. Yes. Yeah. 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 But you it, know what? But you know what? I mean, there's, there's so many years of history here. I mean, part of the financial situation I'm in is his doing. And of course, my responsibility is there. I abdicated during a whole marriage any responsibility to him. And I know that. And but knowing that it hasn't made this anger. All right, but there it is again also. Um, I'm responsible because I abdicated my responsibility accumulatively all of these years, and now I want it to be different. Oh, you just said it. Yes. There. 
So that's where I'm wrong at fault to blame responsible. I think? have to. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, no. And then, you know what? Yeah. I mean, and I'm just so fucking angry at myself. There. Just, that's the source right there. You're not angry at him as much as you are right now angry at yourself for creating these circumstances that now are almost irreversible. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, I mean, as an insight. <laughs> yeah, as an insight. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, right. It's a, it's a that's a tough bone to gnaw on. That's right. Exactly. All right, let's move yeah. forward with, um, I'm not too interested in six and seven. What did you put there? And we'll just park it and go forward. Yeah, you know, these were hard. Um, well, you know, I said for financial, I abdicated all responsibility to him. And you know, that, you know, I get angry, this mental, I, that I would get angry when he wasn't being responsible, but then I was never consistent in, you know, taking that over. So that's where... And then for seven, and I don't know if this is true, but I feel a lot of guilt to have this kid, you yeah. know, yeah. be in the middle now of, of this. Yeah. And you'll look more deeply at that when you get to the eighth step. But it's worthwhile noting here, because I agree, it's an area that you do need to look at in the eighth step, but not now. You don't need to look at it now. So go to number eight, which is about additional fears. Okay that I'm not worthy of being treated with respect, honesty, or cared about, and that I have really bad judgment in people. All right, all right. It's not right or wrong, it's just you're exploring the levels of fear that you have. And again, this is setting you up for the next piece of work that we will do in a couple of weeks on the fear inventory. That's all That's all it is. You're, you're sort of, a, creating some information that you will use later on. And the same with uh, the answer to question number nine about character defects. What did you write there? I wrote shame. Okay, that shame, gullible, naive, blinded my, by my desire to be cared about and um, that I don't want to accept that he doesn't care about me. Yeah, yeah. Um, Dependent. I, I wrote that down last night, codependent. Well, I wrote down dependent. Oh, I am. I am dependent. Yeah, that's I, hate what that. you, <laughs> I knew you would. <laughs> I'm the most independently dependent person you'll ever meet. <laughs> and you know what? Well phrased. <laughs> no, well phrased, absolutely. I'm not sure codependency is the issue, but dependent independent dependency is an issue for you that's that's absolutely right on the money yeah um, i had a boyfriend say that to me 35 years ago well, he was there, right well, there you go you're connecting the dots yeah and also in a way irresponsible because you abdicated your responsibility to be an adult you said take care of me yeah all right. Uh, number 10, then, what's the benefit or the value to you of holding this resentment? I don't even know if I have this. Uh, that I don't have to face. Wait a minute here. Okay, I wrote a few things here. That I don't have to face my responsibility in uh, picking Rich as a husband and letting him run our finances for so many years, even after he showed me who he was multiple times. I don't want, yeah, that's what I wrote. Yeah. I Oh, and then what I also wrote here is I don't want to face my self-hatred and bad judgment. Yeah. 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 Your, your anger is a, a cover, a cover story for your awareness or lack thereof of uh, your abdication of your personal responsibility kitchen but her but i have this pattern of him doing it over and over again and me say, thinking it's going to be different this time there you go that's the dependent that is right? yeah yeah and that may in fact be codependency I, I don't know that much about it to be, be scientific but you, yeah. it's, a, it's yeah. a problem it, it is a problem yeah. <laughs> 
symbol. Okay, so that's the perceived role at the top of the fourth column. Perceived role. Wait, say that again. The perceived role at the top what? of the fourth column. So I got well, I wrote being lied to and taken advantage of. Yeah, I'm a taken advantage of woman. And um, what's the realization? At the bottom? Yeah. Okay. So that I deceive myself because I want him to take care of me. And you know what? And then the other part is too, you know, and I think you mentioned it recently, you know, Alan Berger says that, um, you know, if we had some trauma and I had a lot of trauma from both parents that we have trauma early on, we spend the rest of our lives trying to fix that. I mean, you know, yeah, all right, but I'm going, to do, I'm going to do something that I think might work. Let's try it. Read it again, what you wrote at the top. Being lied to and taken advantage of. So I'm a disadvantaged woman. I, I was taken advantage of. And the truth is that I was a manipulative woman and I took advantage of a husband. I took advantage of him. Yeah, to take care of me. Oh, he would love. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no. For 25 years, you abdicated your responsibility and you took advantage of him. Wow. You hid under the mantle. The man will take care of me. Yeah. No, you know what? You're right. And then when I, I would get angry when he couldn't do it good enough. That's true. That's what I call a turnaround, a nice crisp flip. Rather than, I'm angry at you. Oh, the truth is, I set it all up. It was my play. I was the director. And now I don't like the outcome. That's so true. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like the oh shit moment. Well, you know what, but I've had this oh shit moment for the last 15 years. I mean, you know. Yeah. So, Good you work. know, and I get it deeper, you know, a deeper understanding. But my current sponsor, who's just amazing, she's been my sponsor for 13 years. The first thing she said to me when we started to working together was all of this stuff. You know, OK, I guess I got undependent enough independent enough where I could divorce this man. Otherwise I would never been able to do it, but am I going to be like a hundred by the time I resolve this stuff? Well, uh, only if you don't do what is suggested here, which is to complete the column three and column four on everybody that you want to do it on. All right and pray this prayer for the removal of the resentment in yourself. If you do that, by the end of the year, you'll, and doing your fifth step, you'll probably be free of this. That would be my suspicion. Okay, I'm holding down to that curve. I'm gonna hold on to that. I, I want you to report in regularly on it. It's really important. And this, this process, I don't want to use the term miracle, but it's magical. It, it, it works. And I don't know when it will work for you, but it will be sooner than later. But it will require more work on your part, accepting the responsibility of the third and fourth column, and then going on and finishing your fourth step and doing a fifth step. And we'll talk some more later on about the rest of it. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, wonderful courage, and you stayed right in there. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh, I began to see that all my resentments and rage to my husband has very little to do with him. Yes. It has so much to do with my childhood. Yes. It's like there's this child inside of me that is completely controlling my marriage yes. and seeing it for the first time. Wow. And um, it's hard, it's hard, you know, I live with a sense of entitlement. That's the word that keeps coming up. I'm entitled. I'm entitled because I suffered as a child. Nobody suffered like me. 
everybody had this wonderful, great childhood with perfect parents and I'm the poor one that suffered. So, uh, so I'll do the work. So, yeah. so what would you like to do here? And did you do a third and fourth? Yeah. I did both. I did the third and the fourth. And read the third column, resentment and self-esteem, and then perhaps we'll cross over to the fourth column. Okay, so I resent my husband for holding on to the money that he earns and not giving it to me to spend it. Um, and um, and uh, my self-esteem, what? My self-esteem is that I am an honest, trustworthy, responsible, balanced, mature adult. And my choices are based on my deep concern and love for my children. I'm a devoted mother. Next to the self-esteem, you put fear. Did you write something there? Yeah, that I am dishonest. I break trust, that I'm not trustable. I act immaturely and impulsively, and I victimize other people. So you had an insight there that will serve you well in the fourth column, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the benefit of the fear, the fear column. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I know it's wonderful. Fourth column, what did you write as the perceived role? So my perceived role is that I'm an abused, mistreated, victimized, not appreciated, exploited, pushed around, and misunderstood wife. Wonderful color. I, yes, it's just exactly right. Oh, my God. All of the variations of a theme of yeah. uh, victimized. Great. All right. So then when you looked at question number one about your behavior, when you feel this feeling of victimized, how do you behave? Um, first of all, I don't tell him when I earn money. I use the credit card, even though I told him that he could take it. I use the number of the credit card, pretending that I gave it to him. And I always come crying to him that, that I have to pay it up because I want to be honest. I'm tired. I just want to throw up, really. Ah, no, no, no. This is wonderful courage, but a great insight. And even the smile and the tone in your voice <laughs> tells me that you've gotten free, though, as the result. All right. So how... Um, what did you write for number two, selfish, in terms of the unhealthy thinking about your self-centeredness? Um, that, that I deserve to have his money because I work so hard as being as a mother and taking care of all the family needs. Um, and, and also that um, since I grew up poor and I suffered as a child, because I grew up with rich kids and I was the poor kid. Um, you know, I, I, I do everything for him. I do everything for him. All I'm asking for is all of his money. Is that so much to ask for? And all of your own money. And all of my own money. You right? can still without him knowing. Right. Yeah. All right. Number three, how about dishonesty? You've already revealed a whole bunch, but what else did you write? There's more. There's more. <laughs> that um, I blame him because um, and I blame him why I can't respect him. Right, right, right. No, that's a classic projection. You put onto somebody else that which you do yes. not see in yourself. Number, and the uh, other thing is, as I keep telling him, it's if you really, really love me, <laughs> if you'd really, really love me, you'd be very happy to go into debt all the time for me. Where does that come from? How could I be a mature adult and believe that? You're, you're just a snake oil salesman. Thank you. <laughs> Well, you're smiling, so I'll, I can play on that. Uh, number yeah. four, fear. Then I'll have to get up and take responsibility and go to work and stop uh, sitting at home and looking at everybody else, criticizing all the other women in the world who go to work, but I'm this devoted, caring mother, and that's why I can't go to work. And I'll have to get out of that pity pot and either say, well, this is the price you pay for the choices you make. 
or else get up and go to work. Yeah, or, or reduce your needs or spending. And, oh, by the way, you have a fear of transparency and rigorous honesty. Wow. You know, I always claimed I was so honest. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. No. That was my, like, claim to fame. You're I'm honest. You're the poster child for a bank robber. <laughs> Number I also wrote another fear is that like I'll have to delay this need for immediate gratification. Okay. That's that's where I am. Like now, right now. I want what I want and I want it yesterday. All right. All right. All right. Number five. Um, so number five I wrote where I contribute is that um I can continue living the victim role. And um my husband is responsible, believing that he's responsible for my financial situation. I can continue living the story of I'm entitled because I suffered as a child. But more than that is that one day I could get him to really, really change and take care of me. Uh, you're seeing all of those things that you just read as unhealthy thoughts and feelings and behaviors. Yes? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, then um, six and seven, let's just skip that for right now because I've mentioned it a lot that it's a parking spot. Um, go to number eight, are there any additional fears? Well, I just, I just wanna say, I saw the harm I caused my kids and it really causes me so much pain because I disparaged their father. Oh. I didn't care, I couldn't care. I, like, I couldn't care, I thought, oh, I'm this loving mother. I remember I wrote that, that I'm this loving, caring mother. But all of a sudden I saw that I couldn't care less about them. Yeah. I, I just put him down. I just kept telling them how he's so stingy and he doesn't care about them. I care about them and I love them. I promise and I promise and I promise. And I told them, not today, not yet, tomorrow, soon. I'm going to pay that up. And they're still, my granddaughter said to me, you know, you never bought me the birthday present from three years ago. <laughs> and I and you know it's like I I couldn't it's true I make these promises I'm gonna get you I'm gonna buy you I'm gonna save you I'm gonna do for you I'm gonna save everybody make everybody happy total people pleaser there you have a huge addiction around money also then oh yeah yeah all right additional fears uh, my fear of taking responsibility my fear that um. Um, getting out of my deprived childhood place that I made choices and now I have to accept these these are the consequences of my choices that that to accept the things I can't change and 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 live good with it to live good with it instead of oh poor me number nine character defects oh that I'm irresponsible. I yep. really want to cry. Not only that, I want to really cry women. That I really see that I'm extremely ungrateful. Yeah. I don't appreciate it. I'm ungrateful. I'm demanding. I um, um I also blame him always that because I'm so moody. I'm, un I'm ungrateful. I have no other words to say, really. I always hated doing gratitude with <laughs> I hate gratitude. <laughs> All right. So then number 10, what is the benefit or value of you holding this resentment? Well, well I have a fear of intimacy. I understand. And I can just blame him for that fear and deprive him. And constantly, that's what I do. I just blame him. Yep. If only he would be different. But really, it's my own fears surrounding myself. Yeah. 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 So the the anger is, in fact, your fear of being a stand up, stand on your own independent woman. Yeah. 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 Totally. 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 You know that. Yeah. All right. So um, at the top, what was your uh, perceived role that you you. Uh, gave us quite a litany of victimization. It's good. It, it'd be worthwhile for you to read that again, please. Okay, so that I'm an abused, 
mistreated, victimized, not appreciated, exploited, pushed around and misunderstood wife. Yeah. And, and, and what's the truth at the bottom? What's your realization now? You've been so courageous. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I don't even want to say it, but that I abuse, I mistreat, I victimize, I exploit, and push my husband around to get it. So to make the words that you were using in terms of your victim, you actually are the perpetrator. There's a story in the big book. I forgot what it's, I think it's Dr. Alcoholic or whatever, where he thought that, you know, it's like, I thought he's the narcissist. Yeah. What I found out was that I'm narcissistic. That's classic. That's a classic turnaround. That's a, I mean, I can't tell you how uh, pleased I am that you've been so courageous, humble, and confronting yourself uh, in exploring it personally, but also then in sharing it with us, because I absolutely believe that that was helpful to other people. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you so much. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay, I have a resentment against uh, somebody falsifying two evaluations when I was getting out of the Navy. All right. You have a resentment toward uh, a boss who evaluated you in, by your standards incorrectly. Yeah. And, um, so uh, do you have a self-esteem on that? Sure, that I'm one of the three best electronics technicians in the Navy and would be still. Good. And your fear? Uh, that I was really not viewed as valuable. All right. Good. And, and your perceived role here um, in the top of the fourth column? Is that I am a hapless victim of arbitrary rules and laws and naval officers. Yeah. Hapless victim of the Navy process. All right. Wonderful. And uh, so now you want to look at number one, and it's about behavior. When you feel this today, because you still have the resentment, right. uh, how do you behave when you have this feeling conscious in your heart and gut? How do you behave? Obviously resentful, and I want to uh, um, uh, be by myself. And also find people to commiserate with and say that blankety blank, that's so and so. All right. So you hide out or you talk shit. Right. All right. All right. All right. And um, in number two, what is your unhealthy thinking that generates this resentment? It would be my unhealthy thinking. What did you write? Yeah. Your selfish, your selfishness. My unhealthy thinking is that I've been wronged and that um, that's a permanent thing, right? That it's damaged me permanently. And, and what's unhealthy about it? That it's not true that you're permanently damaged by something that happened 35 years ago because it's not happening to you now. Yeah. It is in the past. Taking on the role of a victim. Yep. All right. Number three, how are you being dishonest? Uh, I really wasn't the greatest sailor in the Navy. All right, but that's back then. How about now? Um, holding, holding this resentment and hiding out and talking shit and playing the victim role. How are you being dishonest? Um, oh, well, uh, that... Uh, um, uh, how am I misrepresenting myself? Um... I guess I'm misrepresenting myself as still being a victim. Yeah. Um, uh, you won't accept responsibility for the present moment. And you played this role of I'm um, just a helpless, hapless outcome of the corrupt Navy. And there's nothing I can do about it. Right. Okay. Yeah. So now, responsibility for yourself today. Right. And what about fear? Number four. Um, afraid, afraid of feeling uh, that I am a disgrace or a failure. All right. And um, number five, responsibility. 
let's, let's deal with the present moment rather than ancient history. This is a real uh, resentment for you. It's yeah. been living with you as a hot coal for a long time. And um, can you see your role and responsibility in keeping this thing so poker red hot? What's the motive in mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. driving this resentment today? Oh, it would just have to be uh, feelings of inadequacy that I can blame on past events. Uh, okay. I mean, those are your words. So write them down and play with them. And let's um, go to number nine, the character defects. What did you write there? Willfulness, arrogance, self-centeredness, and dishonesty. Okay, pretty generic, and you mm -hmm. need to get more specific, all right? So, but not right now, just to, <laughs> as you go through it. Yeah, no, we, you need to be more concrete than just pulling, you know, blue sky terms out of the, out of the air. Uh, number 10, um, what did you write there? Uh, I hold this resentment because it justifies my current position in life and gives me people to blame for my shortcomings. Yeah, it explains the last 20 to 30 years of failure. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So at the top, you put, I'm a hapless, whatever you said. Yeah, uh, hapless victim of arbitrary rules and laws. And what's the truth at the bottom? I'm blaming events in my past for failures in my life right now relieving me of the responsibility of changing myself for the better. Yeah. Um, I've taken on the role of helpless. You're not hapless, you're helpless. Yeah. Right? Right. I, I don't know. I, I like to play with words and try to get them crisp flip. But uh, so if it doesn't work for you, then try something else. But uh, what, what would you say is your experience of a turnaround here of realization? Oh, that uh, I'm uh, limiting, that I'm, that I'm really, really believe, have held the thought that my life has been literally destroyed by uh, consequences in the back. In, in my past. What's the truth? That I'm sitting here right now and I'm not literally destroyed. Right? But your life today is whose fault? It's my life. So, yeah, you, you created it. it. You created I every created piece of my life. You yeah. created every piece of it. Yep. yep. Yeah, by my, my uh, reaction to occurrences. Yep. Yep. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm, I'm resenting God. Yes. And I'd like to read my third uh, column quickly and then do my fourth. If it's That'll okay. be great. Um, what's your um, self-esteem? Well, I resent God for creating a child, me, to experience sexual abuse from my father. All right. I am a precious, precious, precious child of God to be loved, cared for, and protected. My fear I was not loved for, cared for, and protected by God or anyone. Pride. Others should see God treating me as an innocent, full of joy and wonder, angelic, good, protected, and beloved. Fear is I'm bad, deserving of abuse. Ambition. What do I want to happen? I want God to not allow this to happen to any child or anyone else. My fear is God is not omnipotent. It's a myth. He can't stop this abuse. Four, security. What do I need in order to be okay? Why? I need God to heal me. Why? I need to feel safe and trusting. My fear, God is powerless. I'll never be able to feel safe and trusting. Personal relations. How do I expect this relationship to be? I expect God's to be the epitome of righteousness, goodness, the ultimate arbitrator, our all-knowing. My fear, God is unfair, arbitrary, and cruel. I didn't do this, the sex uh, gender thing. Um, and what is my effective value? 
Nothing should interfere with, affect, or lessen my ability to be safe, connected, and trusting. Okay. All right. Let's go over to the fourth column. What's your perceived role? My perceived role is that I'm a, an abused child, violated, and betrayed. Um, yep. Abused child. Excellent. All right. And when you feel that feeling, number one, how do you behave? I rage at God. I, gener I generalize anger and defiance toward all authority figures, especially men. Yeah, yeah. All right. And yep. uh, no, that's, that's fine. Number two, um, how is it unhealthy, the thought that is generating this feeling? Self-centered. Excuse me, please say that again, please. Read what you wrote for number two. Oh, for number two, thinking about myself. Okay, what is the selfish thought that generates this resentment? God is to blame for all my shortcomings. He's at fault. Now, are you, uh, I'm hearing that you actually believe that. I'm not hearing that you've answered the question. Oh. Is, is that an unhealthy thought? Well, absolutely. That's right. Stupid. I mean, but that's what I think. And yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So what is the selfish thought that generates this resentment? Oh, that generates this resentment. It's when I think that God is to blame for my life. Is God to blame for your life? Well, intellectually, I know he's not and all that. I you know that. No, no, let's, let's explore it intellectually. This is really an important, uh, you know, that's, I'm going to spend a little time with it. This is an important, not just for you, but everybody. So. Mm. Um, hmm. um, you mean, what's the wrong turn I took in thinking about God or. Um, well. Tell me about your blaming God for the, what is your concept of God and what is your concept of free will? Oof, that's interesting. Um, what is my concept of God? Well, my concept of God is that I'm trying desperately to connect with some essence. No, you're, you're that, talking about yourself now. I, I yes. wasn't asking about you. No. It, what is your concept of God? Who is God to you? Um, well, he always was a bastard, but um, I'm trying. Okay, yeah. No, you're blaming God for your life. Yes. What, what is God? Is 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 God the? Yeah. Okay, okay, the, okay, okay. The creator of the uh, universe, and it's like a clock, and it should run smoothly without any hiccups. Is that your concept of God? My concept of God, I guess, is the child's concept of what I grew up with, that he's omnipotent, no, all-knowing. Let's assume that God is omnipotent. Let's stay with that one, because you used it earlier. Let's okay. stay with God is all-powerful. So what? Did God create you? In, in, in the theological sense, what do you believe? Yes, yes. yes, yes. In, yeah, of course, you came from your parents. But anyway, um, so do you have free will? Um, I don't accept it, and I run on, um, yeah. I won't accept responsibility for my free will is what I think. Oh, okay. You're getting, now, what does, first of all, I would agree with you, but I'm not sure what it is you why you said that? How, what is it that you really actually think and mean about that? That I'm not taking responsibility for the choices I've made. That my choices right. have been made. Okay. All right. Yeah, you blame God because God should protect little girls. And everybody, yeah. Well, I mean, really? How about, how about the two million kids that died at Auschwitz what happens then it's a good question well yeah I I it saddens me so much to you know to see that happening now you mean, you mean reality saddens you this is the way the world is yes reality does sadden. free will and there is mental illness 
but do you have free will? You see, you're, you're, you're actually, and, and that's why I, I was wondering if that was an insight or whether that was some kind of a logical thing on your part where you said, I hold this position because that way I don't have free will and I don't have to take responsibility for my life. I think that is very true for me. Well, that's what you said. Yeah. All right. Let's go to number three, dishonest. I put my manipulation, trying to get others to feel sorry for me, to feel awe and all that I have overcome, and that I'm entitled to special, special treatment, waiting to be rescued. There you go. That's, yeah. Now, you see that as unhealthy or healthy? Yes, 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 right. absolutely. Number four. Yeah, that's not in. Number four right. is here. Who will I be without being God's victim? I'll be losing my cherished orphan Annie identity, my story of a horrific childhood suffering. Okay, and it's a question that bears some consideration on your part to come out the other side to answer that question. Strip away this story of victimhood. What do you have? That's, an, that's a rhetorical question. You asked it. I'm endorsing it. It's a great question for you. Number five, uh, where are you responsible for this anger that you have toward God? My, the contribution of the original event, I don't know. My current reaction to God is I'm confused. My belief about God get in the way of any faith I could have. Okay, all right, all right. But how does that generate your resentment? These, um, these blaming feelings that you have toward God, how does that come out of your own self-centeredness? I, I, think, I think I have this idea of, of, um, of being helpless and that I can't do it. And therefore I don't take responsibility for my choices or, yeah. um, and. Um, yeah. It's yeah. Such a, such a thing. Is, um, it sounds also, I mean, I'm assuming you've had, and you don't have to comment on this, some therapy around the, early sexual abuse that you experienced, but it sounds like you got a lot of shame and guilt around it too. I do, I do, I do, I do. Yeah. That, you've, that you've not very effectively dealt with. It's a, yeah, it's little by little, I think. Well, yeah, but when are you gonna to get to it? Well, I'm in therapy now and we, um, I think it's how I, what, what I'm trying to do with how that, how, how I've allowed that to frame my life and how I see things and how I think yeah. of people and all sorts of things. Um, the, the, uh, the terms I was grappling with was uh, learned helplessness. Yes. And as long as you can blame a father or you can blame a mother or you can blame God, then you can stay a four-year-old. You can stay a young person without responsibility because you don't have to take action i'm helpless don't you know because of my history exactly yeah but, yeah yeah I, I i i really see myself as a victim and i do not like it at all yeah yeah, yeah. right well that's why you're doing this work wonderful let's skip six and seven did you have any additional fears in eight yes being alone being responsible Intimacy, sexuality, helplessness, fear of change. Wow, that just endorses everything we just talked about, right? Yep. All right, number nine, character defects. I put arrogance, self-centeredness, stubborn, shame and guilt. Okay. A, is there any rigidity in your life? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm noticing more and more this perfectionist, this rigid, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. The, sh yeah. the shoulds are constantly in my head. Yeah, they're like brick bats. Yeah, I mean, being brought up by nuns didn't help, you know, but yeah, well, yeah. You can blame but, them too, throw them I in the I can't, Okay, thank you very much for pointing that out. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it, love it. No, but that, you know, it's, it's, it's such an automatic pilot, it's such an automatic response in a way that, it, it, to, to, to do this, this shift or this reframing, as you see, this turn yeah. 
it seems like a ship turning or something. I mean, it seems, it is. Like ship, you know, but. It is. but you see what you just expressed though, and you have right from the beginning is a willingness and openness, but now a sense of humor about it. When you talked about the nuns, that was wonderful. Cause if you can hold that humor, there's some healing in that. Oh, good, 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 good. Um, number number ten. Uh, 10. Why do I hold on to this resentment? I get to feel justified for my lack of faith, lack of self-care, and lack of enjoying life. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. 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 I may as well cloak myself in black. Be a martyr. Yeah. Black. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And, and I'll get a lot of attention that way. Yeah. And well, it's almost there. like I don't know. It's almost like I don't know how to get attention without all this baggage. You right. know. Right. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, that, that's a habit, right? And yeah. so your perceived role at the top again, you talked about abuse. Abuse, child violated and betrayed, I wrote. I now realize I am continuing the abuse and betraying myself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that I'm not a, I was a victim. It is true. I was victimized, but now I'm the perpetrator continuing oh. the story. Oh. Oh, I didn't think of that. I'm the perpetrator, but yeah, I, if I'm continuing the abuse and betrayal, ugh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's hard. Yeah. Well, but yes, it is hard. Very confrontational. But once you accept it, then you go, and I now can make a different choice. And it, it's been, and this seems to all be about because I, I wrote little notes about. Um, like now that I know this information about myself and then you said anyone who's doing this work can't be happy, <laughs> which I think is funny too. Not, not but, during it, right. But, um, but I, it, it, basically you're saying the answer to all of this is now that you know, you have a choice. And you said it earlier to reframe it. Mm -hmm. I was a victim. I'm not a victim. And God didn't do it. Remember I said, God protects us from nothing, supports us in everything. But, but your idea of God and reality, um, and, this, and then the third step, I am, here it goes, I'm guaranteed, how's that? How about for the rigidity? I'm guaranteed care of a loving God. Maybe not loving God, care of a God, no. right? It's a decision that you make that that is, in fact, the truth. And then you live as if it is and see how your life turns out. Okay, I have, I have lived my life with an uncaring God. You Since have lived your life with a God that doesn't take care of you because your father didn't take care of you. And you've, you've put that template over every relationship you've ever had, especially with men. Amen. Yes. 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 Yep. Well, I've definitely generalized that, that anger and defiance to it. Yep. Yep. Yes. Yep. You're addressing it. And, and the, there, <clears throat> there's going to be such wonderful healing here for you. All right. Not without some suffering, not without some pain, not without some embarrassment, not without some serious work. So one of the things that you really do need to challenge yourself is about step two. And you might even want to revisit it if you want to take a little extra time and, and ask yourself on page 53, God is or God isn't? What is my choice? And then on 55, all right, what are, what are the attributes that I want in my Disney fantasy model, this would be okay here. I'm endorsing it. Wow, of a guy. I'm totally endorsing it, which is a complete re, uh, you know, uh, turnaround for me in the way I speak. But this is the only way that we can approach faith effectively. And then try it out for three months and see what your experience is. I sent you that article on faith and belief. Yeah. And, um, and I never knew there was a difference, but I have all sorts of beliefs. 
believe me, and negative beliefs about God. And yeah, and that's what the third and fourth column have revealed to you. Yeah. Yeah. But and they don't serve you well. I have been in I have been in twelve step rooms uh, seventeen years as a food addict, and in an Al also not that long, but um. And I've never really got hang of the second, you know, the third step. First step, I think I have, but not the second and third. So that's so that's my goal. Yeah. Yeah. Continue with that set aside prayer and attitude and see what happens. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Very courageous work. Thank you. Wonderful. So let's pray this prayer of transformation because that's really, we're in the heart of it now. We are in the heart of it. This is the transformational stuff. Column three and column four is where the major changes will happen. Please join me. Lord, make me a channel of your peace. That where there is hatred, I may bring love. That where there is wrong, I may bring the spirit of forgiveness. That where there is discord, I may bring harmony. That where there is error, I may bring truth. That where there is doubt, I may bring faith. That where there is despair, I may bring hope. That where there are shadows, I may bring light. That where there is sadness, I may bring joy. Lord, grant that I may seek rather to comfort than to be comforted, to understand than to be understood, to love than to be loved. For it is by self-forgetting that one finds, it is by forgiving that one is forgiven. It is by dying that one awakens to eternal life. Amen.